Yo, what is up everyone? Swaggy, you're back guys. Got another video today. We're talking about Andre Drumming. It's just a matter of time before he accepts a buyout and joins the Brooklyn Nets. Now, I did not expect to wake up to this news. Apparently, it's been going around for the past couple of days. The first thing that came to my mind was, that, that's just ridiculous. I remember a couple of days ago, I joked around saying, if Drumming goes to the Nets, somehow in 2K Sam, I'll still lose in the first round. And now we're going to find out because apparently it's just a matter of time before that happens. So let's like talk about the Cavs before we talk about the Nets. So for the Cavs, they have Jared Allen, of course. They acquired him via trade from the Brooklyn Nets. And now they're wanting to part ways with Drumming and also JaVale McGee. So first, I figured McGee made more sense. He's getting paid less. Maybe the Nets can send a couple of second rounders to get him. McGee's also now spreading the floor. He's hitting threes, not consistently really, but he is showing the ability to shoot the ball. So he can spread the floor. He can run pick and roll. He can block shots, which is what the Nets need. But now they're looking at Andre Drumming, who's a few years younger, obviously a better player, can block shots. The one issue that I have with Drumming is him asking for the ball in the post. He kind of reminds me a little bit of Dwight Howard when he played for the Rockets. Freakishly athletic, great rebounder, great defender, but waste offensive possessions by wanting the ball in the post. And Drummond can just forget that and run screens, run the floor, play high energy. Then this is going to be just ridiculous for the Brooklyn Nets. If they get Drummond, he can defend and beat. I'm not saying he's going to lock him up, but if you face these Sixers, you need someone to defend and beat. Because you have to think, Embiid, if they hadn't acquired a center, which they still haven't gotten Drummond, so it's not 100% definitive, but I'm just saying... If they hadn't gotten a center and they're playing the Sixers, Embiid's going to have a field day. I mean, this guy is going to put up better numbers than anyone else on the Nets team. He's going to be unstoppable. But again, it's Embiid against the world because I don't see Ben Simmons doing much. Again, he can't shoot the Nets. It shouldn't be too difficult to defend him. I mean, honestly, I trust Durant to be able to defend Ben Simmons because he's a little bit taller and lengthier. And obviously, Ben Simmons, as long as you can limit him to transition, but now that you get Drummond, he's a body that can actually defend Embiid. He's 6'10", 6'11", not 7 foot, 7 one like Embiid, but he's big enough to be able to contest Embiid. He also is a better rebounder than Embiid, which most people aren't, but Drummond is one of the best, if not the best rebounder in the league. And when you take a look at what he's averaging, 18.7 points on top of 14.6 rebounds, 2.7 assists, and 1.4 blocks to go with 1.4 steals. Those are ridiculous numbers. You, you don't see those numbers very often. I'm going to be honest. I don't know if anyone in the history of the game has ever averaged that. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong here. I'm sure we know about it. But I, I just feel like, I mean, 19, 15, and 3 to go with a block and a steal of the game, that, that hasn't been done very often. I'm sure maybe a few people have done it. But again, that's just ridiculous. I mean, I'm sure maybe Shaq has done that. I don't, I don't know. But the point being... This makes sense for both sides. You have to realize that I don't see Drummond having any trade value. He's on an expiring contract. We know he's really good, but is a team going to send assets for him when he's going to walk in free agency? And even if he doesn't walk in free agency, are you willing to pay Andre Drummond for the future? He's a good player, but again, I don't know if I want to lock this guy up. He does a lot of faults to his game. Like I mentioned, the posting up, other things outside of that. I'm not saying he's like a bad guy or anything, but... It's just really risky to trade for him. So that, that's why you saw him last season, even when he got traded from the Pistons to the Cavs for basically nothing. So the Nets makes the perfect amount of sense. They need drumming. They're playing for a championship. They're playing for veterans. They can get him for nothing. I mean, if he accepts a buyout, they're literally getting him for nothing. Now, the question that remains to me, and I'm not sure of exactly, is are the Nets going to be sending anything to the cap so if he accepts a buyout and then they trade him to well i guess technically if he accepts a buyout they wouldn't it wouldn't be a trade so maybe that's not a smart question but again i, I guess the, the nets are going to pick him up for nothing drop i mean he's an all an all-star for nothing at 27 it's a little bit questionable i'm just glad that he's going to the nets because again the nets as good as they are they still need a, maybe even another piece like could you imagine if they got Derek Rose to go? That would be ridiculous. But they definitely needed a center. They could still use some more bench pieces. It doesn't have to be. I'm not talking about like a Lou Will type player. But they could definitely use another bench or two player on maybe another buyout. So as long as guys are coming to the Nets to fill up that roster. Because when you go up against some of these other teams, like the Lakers, who have much more depth and much more chemistry that play very good defense. Like the Lakers don't have the offensive ability of the Nets, but their defense is just on a different level. So if the Nets aren't going to be able to get buckets as much as they have been, 
the Lakers are going to be able to beat them very easily because if they're getting stops and the Nets can't get a stop. So we'll see what happens, man. That's a, a long time away. The, the Nets still have to get through an Eastern Conference. I mean, you're talking about the Bucks, the Sixers, the team like the Miami Heat and the Celtics. Like those are not easy outs. Even a, the Pacers could be a six, seven game series. Like we just don't know the Eastern Conference. I'm not saying it's like incredibly deep. It kind of is, but not to the extent of the West. And same with the, goes with the Lakers. I mean, you're looking at, again, the Clippers, the Nuggets, the Jazz, like I'm, all those teams are going to be difficult on the Lakers. Not saying they one of them will upset the Lakers, but I am saying that it's going to be tough. You're talking maybe six, seven games. So, I mean, you look at the Nuggets, they're actually kind of got worse. So maybe not them. The Jazz are playing great defense, but again, Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert against LeBron and AD, I think that should be fairly obvious who I'm taking in that. The Clippers probably are the only chance as they even last season, they were the only chance, in my opinion, at least. But the thing with the Clippers is Kawhi and Paul George are playing great, but again, they, like they've kind of regressed on the bench. Like you look at Lou Williams, hasn't really played that great this season. Lou Kennard, I guess, is starting to find some rhythm, so that's good. We know that they picked him up, one of the surprise uh, additions this offseason for them. And then anyone else in the West, it, to me, it doesn't have that great of a chance. I mean, like honestly, like a sleeper team that I had last season was the Pelicans, but they're just way too young and they're also at the bottom of the NBA standing. So obviously they might not even make the playoffs, but if Zion was healthy and like Ingram and Lonzo, but again, Lonzo has regressed. He's not played well this season. Ingram is playing well, but they're just a mess, man. I don't know, but honestly, I don't have much else to add, guys. I'm going to leave it at this. Let me know your thoughts down below on Andre Drummond accepting a buyout and joining the Brooklyn Nets. Dude, like, it's just crazy, man. Andre Drummond, they get the Nets are getting a, a prime all-star center. They need a center, and not just any center, but they need a center that can defend and rebound, and they get the best rebounding center in the league in Drummond. If he can change up his game, man, it's going to be a huge pickup for the Nets, dude. They were one or two pieces away, and I did not expect them to get a player of this caliber. Like, I thought they'd get a JaVale McGee, but a Drummond? Dude, like, they're, if they imagine they had Harden, Kyrie, Durant, Drummond, and then who else? I guess they would need a... Uh, a power forward so imagine they got like Serge Ibaka or something crazy I know he's on the Clippers but I'm not, like dude it, it's over bro the Nets are coming man everyone should be afraid everyone should be really really afraid that that's why I'm glad the the Rockets are building for the future because like there's no point to try to win right now nobody's stopping the Lakers and nobody's stopping the Nets dude it's just it's a clash of the Titans to the finish guys it's your boy Swaggy signing out hope you guys have a great rest of your day I'm out peace